Hello, my beautifuls. Welcome back to my channel. I'm pretty excited about today's project because I get to practice a new technique that I haven't really worked on much. Uh, and so it's going to be fun to uh, kind of revisit and uh, redo the technique and to teach it to you guys. I actually learned this from the incomparable Miss Kelly Sutton through her videos and her YouTube channel. And if you don't know who she is, she's part of our Great Beat Extravaganza group that you guys can join. It's a free virtual event and um, a ton of us small businesses put on a big show for you guys virtually. And um, that's where I learned it from. And I'm going to use it in today's project, kind of reinterpret the technique and um, add a little bit of more, uh, I don't know, flair to it, if you will, and some beads and stuff and um, teach you guys something new. So I'm going to just pan around to what the finished design looks like. Um, real quick, as I'm switching my cameras and stuff around, make sure that you guys give this video a giant thumbs up if you enjoy the content and to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. All of those things are very important for the health of the channel. So um, I hope you guys will do that for me. And I'm just going to pan over it right down to the table and we're just going to get right into it. So I've got a few materials at my table, but before I get into that, I'm gonna actually go over the tools that I'm gonna be using. First is a pair of wide nose pliers that have been dipped in a product called Tool Magic. Tool Magic basically creates a rubberized ending so that this makes it comfortable to um, crimp my silver silk custom findings and to grip any sort of uh, metal that might be a little bit more slick. Uh, so I just love having these. It also prevents any sort of scratching or marring that might happen in the crimping process. Um, so I definitely highly recommend Tool Magic for that purpose. I've got a pair of round nose pliers. I've got a pair of chain nose pliers. And last but not least, I've got a pair of cutters. These will be used for cutting my um, my craft wire, or in this case, my head pins, as well as my silver silk chain, which I am ready to talk about now. This is a uh, knitted leather cord, and it's a product that I had actually as a, I don't know, a, a sample, if you will, from uh, what I want to create, which is a full line of the knitted leather wires. Um, so this is sort of a test run for it, but I just had to show it to you guys and I had to um, make it available in my pop-up shop, which happens every now and then. I encourage you guys to sign up for my text messages so that um, you'll know when the secret link to my website pops in and you guys can get exclusive products. So this is a tan colored leather with um, antique copper knitted wire um, that's been knitted on it. And it is such a cool texture, a great textile to work with and perfect for making barrel knots. And if you guys, again, know Ms. Kelly Sutton, she uses leather cord for her barrel knots. And so this is just taking it to a whole nother level. <laughs> I think she'd be very proud of me. So I've got three, a three foot spool of that to work with here. Um, I've got some 15 millimeter large jump rings so you'll need some of those. And I have them in this vintage bronze color. Um, I've got a toggle clasp with jump rings on it already. These are about five millimeter jump rings and the toggle size is probably around 12 millimeters, give or take. Also in the antique bronze color. I've got a pair of single strand end caps of my custom findings. These are special because they grip onto the ball chain of the capture chain that I typically use for some of my projects. Um, in this case, we're not using it for that, but these little end caps are very special in that they have little teeth inside of it. Um, and so they grip onto whatever you're going to put through it. In this case, we're gonna be using it for our leather cord. And so um, it's going to grip onto the knitted wire part of it, and it'll be a nice permanent fix. Uh, you don't need any glue or any tools outside of your wide nose pliers to be able to crimp these. So again, just having those on standby is a good idea. Next, you'll need a bunch of baubles. So these are made um, with beads, of course, and uh, some head pins, which look like this. These are also part of my custom findings that are specifically cast for me. Um, these are brass. These have a brass core and they're plated on the outside. And so that you get consistent color with all of my custom findings. And they're really fun and soft to use. 
Um, so essentially, this is what the bobble will look like. It's just a simple loop on top of your bead component. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate that first, and then we're going to get around to creating our barrel knots so that we got all our techniques covered. I'm just going to string that right through the bead, and I'm going to actually press down on the rest of my um, head pin there so that I've got this really good little 90 degree angle bend going on. I'm gonna grab my cutters and I'm going to trim off, oh, about until I've got a half inch of wire. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to go up through my, the part of my round nose pliers and just make sure that my uh, wire isn't sticking out. So I've got a pretty good grip on it. I'm about maybe three millimeters, give or take into my plier tip there. And I'm just going to start rotating it away from me uh, until that little bit starts to, the tip starts to touch the stem of my head pin there. I've got a little bit of a gap, as you can see. So the trick to this is to grab your cutters and just to trim off a little bit of your, of the tip of that wire there. And then what you can do is go back into your round nose pliers and just to complete out the loop. Um, it might start to bend on one side, which it looks like it has, and that's okay. So I'm just gonna go back and grip on the stem part of it and twist back so that my loop is now centered. And I've got a pretty good little bobble there. So that's really how you create them. And then you can create sets of them ahead of time uh, just so that it, it'll make your stringing a lot easier uh, and, and assembly at the end of it a lot easier. So I've got also a nice little pendant um, that I am going to be using for the center of my design. So essentially all of my bobbles are created and I'm just going to set this other stuff to the side for now. Okay, you will need your jump rings handy and you'll need your knitted wire. I'm going to eyeball about about probably 14 inches out of um, out from the end. And we're gonna be essentially using our fingers to create this barrel knot. It'll should feel comfortable. Um, this knitted wire isn't hard on the skin or anything like that. Um, and your fingers just, I feel like make the best tool for this. I'm gonna grab my jump ring and I'm going to go up through with my knitted wire so that I've got my jump ring sort of hanging out there at the end. And I'm going to just start to twist it around my finger as such, okay? So that I've got the jump ring kind of um, strung there uh, right against my finger. And then I've got my knitted wire that just twists right around. I wanted to climb over what I just had earlier. And so I'm basically coiling it to my left, okay? I'm going to go up through one more time. Actually, I'm gonna go two more times. Again, twisting it around and I'm going to go one more time now so that I've got essentially three wraps going through my jump ring. Um, you don't wanna be super tight with this. You could see my fingers turning blue because I really had a hard grip on it, but I'm going to at this point slip it off and I'm going to go through those coils that I just made. Okay, it'll sort of come loose, but you just simply tighten it from both ends. And once you start to do that, you'll see that this really great little knot starts to form and it holds your jump ring in place as such. We'll be doing this two more times. So don't worry if you didn't catch it the first time. And of course there's always replay. So now I've got a nice little necklace rope there for um, for my necklace and then I've got a, a starting point for my knot. The thing is with this knot, it'll wanna spring out and bounce uh, a little bit off of itself. But what you can do is use some glue. If you wanted to use a bit of Loctite or if you wanted to use some E6000 just there inside of the coil, you can um, and it'll hold it in place. But really, if you pull it hard enough, the knitted wire kind of locks in on itself and it should have a pretty good hold on it. So let's do that again. I'm going to grab my jump ring and I'm gonna just slide that right on. Okay, just move it down. I'm going to now 
go over my finger, go up through the jump ring. Okay, I'm gonna do that a couple more times. Go over your finger, up through the jump ring. And one more time, up through the jump ring, go around your finger and then kind of loosen everything up and just go right through all of it. Oop, there we go. Okay. And then kind of just hold it in place. And you'll notice that it'll start to tighten up quite nicely. You can space these out just a little bit. I might have gotten little extra knots there that I didn't need now that I think about it. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> when you get your coils nice and organized, that's when it's uh, nice and clean in the design there. So there we go. Um, I'm just going to kind of press these out away from each other just to get it uh, a little bit of a space in between there for my necklace design. And I'm going to do that one more time just to show you guys that full complete circle. Or actually, I should say focal area for my design. All right, string it through. Go around once, come up. Go around again, come up, one more time, come up, go back, slip it off your finger, and come up through all of it, all of the coils that you just made, and tighten. It's really all there is to it. Kind of get those knots in place and then um, that's pretty much it. Just leaving it nice and fluffy as well. And I've got a beautiful centerpiece that's ready to decorate. So then I'm gonna stick it here on the on my work surface. And if you have your jump rings kind of turned in at the right spot, which you can kind of mess around and see where that seam is, um, it'll just make hooking on your baubles a lot easier. So I'm going to start with the center first and then work my way out. I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers. I'm going to open up my bobble, grab my beads. And again, you can kind of create any pattern that you want to with this. Totally up to you. Okay. I'll leave that creativity up to you guys. <laughs> and uh, now you just string on your stuff. It's very easy. I must say, let's find that seam again. That's probably the hardest part of all this is trying to find where the jump ring ends and where it begins. Okay, oops. You know what, let's start with this one. There we go. Okay, let's do that. And then now for this side. Just open that up, string on your things, and then close it up. That's it. Oh my gosh, can you believe how easy that is? You could do this in no time and get a spectacular design. So I'm going to move that out of the way, and let's finish this guy up. So I'm going to grab my leather knitted wires. I'm going to met. oh... That never happens. So um, apparently my ends are even, so <laughs> I guess I got lucky. Uh, so I don't need to cut anything, but if your ends are not even, just trim it to, to the same length. Um, but really all this part requires is you just string on your end cap right over the leather, uh, the knitted, excuse me, knitted leather wire. Give it a good crimp, a good squeeze with your wide nose pliers on both sides. Just like that. And at this point, you can string on your clasp with the jump rings as such. 
pretty easy, uh, not much to it, which is good. And um, really it's just about practicing those barrel knots. So if you, again, want to um, really hone in on it and develop it, uh, you could watch this video over and over on replay just to see how I did it. But essentially, here is my necklace design that I made for you guys in minutes. Ta-da, there we go. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? So I'm gonna pan back around to my face. And I just wanna say, I hope you guys had an enjoyable show and enjoyed uh, learning a new technique. And I enjoyed sampling this from Miss Kelly Sutton as well. Um, and the leather cord is such a cool material to work with. I'm probably going to have more of my pop-up shop. So be sure to hop onto my text messages and get those notifications. And you will be the first to know when all of the new products and the exclusive goodies are in my shop. Um, again, make sure to give this video a giant thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And last but not least, you can find some inspiration over on my Instagram, as well as our Silky's Facebook group, which is right here. <laughs> and until next time, guys, I will um, see you and keep it creative and fun. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I love all of you so much. So I'll see you next time.